Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, we're going to be processing a sample of ore I have behind me in this white bag, and we're going to do a little mill study on it to determine the percent recovery of gold and silver that we're getting out of our ore. Here's a quick look at our sample. It's uh, mostly quartz vein material with some uh, pyrotite and pyrite, and quite a bit of free gold in this stuff as well. But you can see it's it's very oxidized. Um, and so we're going to run it through our one ton per hour turnkey system and, uh, and crush it up and see how much gold we can liberate out of this stuff.
All right, guys, I brushed down the table, got all the gold off. We finished running our sample. Here's a little bit number one. Here's the number two high grade. I'm gonna pan those out, but first I wanna talk a little bit about my methods for collecting our samples that we're gonna process later. I took our tailing samples right here out of this pipe, and so it's before they've gone through the classifier or anything else, it's right off the table, so I have all the size fractions all the way down to the sludge and the slimes. So uh, we can, we can be uh, real confident that I got all the tailings um, in our sample there. And then I took a sample of the, the head ore right out of the hammer mill here, right off the hammer mill chute. I grabbed it here. Uh, oh, you can't see. I grabbed it right there. And I took a little, a little bucket and dipped it into there five seconds. And I have uh, the, the head ore here and the, the tails over there. And I took a sample every about five minutes and I counted for five seconds for each of the heads and the tails. So here coming up, when I talk about heads and tail samples, you know where I got them from and, and uh, what they're composed of. All right, here's the gold panned out of the number one cons. And there's the finger for scale, but it's all through here, obviously. And uh, so we'll get it. I'll show you now how I'm gonna uh, melt it down into a button so we can get it weighed. All right, so I've got my gold here in the corner. I'm just gonna take a snuffer bottle and suck it up for now. Ooh, a lot of gold. And obviously I'm gonna lose a little bit here back in the pan. I'm gonna to have to do this two or three times to get it all cleaned up enough to where I don't have much gold left in this gold pan. So let me work on getting her cleaned up a little bit, and we'll take a look at uh, how I'm going to get this gold out of the snuffer bottle. All right, so we've got our snuffer bottle. I've got all my gold cleaned up from the number ones. I'm just going to pull out the straw here. And this is, uh, this is goofy, but this is a cup with toilet paper in it and a little funnel. And I'm just going to get all my gold down to the bottom of that toilet paper. Let me see if you can see it in there. There you go, there's my gold. And once it's all down in there, I can wring the little bit of water that's left out of there, make a little pouch for it, and put it in the Q-Pell furnace. A little bit of lead, melt it all down and get the gold cleaned up into one nice little button and we can get her weighed for how much gold was recovered out of the number one bucket. And then we can go away the, we'll do the same process for the number two and we'll get the gold from the number two as well. Okay. Now, I usually do this with a blue shop towel. It's a little bit stronger, but I didn't have any, so I gotta be real gentle so it doesn't rip. I'm just squeezing the water out and all our gold stays in there. So now I can put it right in the furnace and the toilet paper is just gonna burn right off and our gold will be left in the cupel. All right, guys, here's our toilet paper. We actually had a little rip in it, so I should probably <laughs> get some get some double ply next time. Uh, but I'm just going to add a little bit of lead, put it in our furnace with our cupel, and uh, the lead will oxidize away any of the impurities in there, leaving just the precious metal, the gold and the silver. I always like to preheat my cupels, too, especially when you're putting wet stuff in them so the water doesn't boil and pop if they get a little wet. So the water's just pretty much boiling out of it at this point. And that'll just burn up in there and the lead will melt and absorb all the gold. Toilet paper's burning up there. 
I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little puddle of liquid lead underneath there. So that's it's all going according to plan. Here's the gold in the number two high grade I panned out. And there's actually not very much there. It's really, really super fine. And it's, it's very thin in the pan. So there's not a lot of gold there. But we'll get it sucked up, do our filter process, get it in a cupel, and uh, we'll be able to weigh the amount of gold we got in the number two. But n I, I would estimate that 90 to 95% of the gold ended up in the number one. And this is the little bit that uh, got in the number two. All right, guys, looks like both our buttons have froze up here. There's one for number two. And there's one for number one. All right, we'll get our buttons weighed up. Here's the number one. Just over nine grams. And here's the number two. So 1.2, so a little over 10, about a 10 and a third grams. All right, guys, now we're going to figure out how much gold we recovered. And here's our head sample. Here's our tailing sample. And uh, rather than taking all this and drying it out, I've just taken a piece of pipe here. And I've just cored these, uh, this head sample. And you can just get it in there. Twist it down until you hit the bottom, and then pull the pull the core out, and you can get the the material needs. So I got I got the that's how I got the material out. We'll get it here. We'll get it dried out. I'm going to mix up some flux. It's going to be a uh, hundred gram sample of the head ore. I'm going to mix up a hundred grams of anhydrous borax and a hundred grams of soda ash, and then I'm going to add to it. 50 grams of litharge and a couple of nails for iron. And we'll get them in our assay furnace over here, just melting furnace, and uh, get them melting down. And then we'll keep all the lead out and see how much gold we recovered. Well, here's our sample all mixed up. I got two nails in there. Uh, I'm gonna do two different head samples and two different tail samples, and I'm gonna use new crucibles every time. All right, now we got our little lead blocks. We'll put them here in our cupels, put them in our cupel furnace, and we'll get that lead out of there and we can measure the precious metal bead. I'm always jealous of the guys down the Southwest and Big Stack D down in Australia. They're always talking about how hot it is and blue sky and sunshine. Well, here in the Pacific Northwest, we have rain and wind. This is the weather we put up with. All right, and here's our uh, two head ore samples and our two tailing samples. And there's a little bead there and a little bead there. Uh, so we'll get these plucked out of here, we'll weigh them, and then we'll average them together and do some math on our percent recovery. We've got a scale that reads down to 0 0.0001 grams, so that's a tenth of a milligram. And here's a sample of one of our bead weights. So I'll get all of them all weighed and average them together and then we'll do some math. 
All right, guys, so let's do our math here. Um, I've got our head or beads here. They, uh, the weights are here. Then I did two of each. And th this is important because the more uh, trials that you do, the better average you get. Because if you look at these, these are off by more than 10% of each other. So uh, if you can do three, four, or five of these and average them all together, that's a better way to get uh, the most accurate results. But here's our average weight of our bead. And our uh, units here are important. This is the grams of precious metals in a 100-gram sample. And there's 10,100 grams in a metric ton. So in one metric ton of head ore, we have somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 9.5 grams. Tailings is the same calculation. Here's the weight of our beads, the average weight, the conversion, and that's the amount of gold that are left in our tailings. So our percent recovery is you take the, the two, divide them against each other, and there's our percent recovery. And again, I use the term precious metals, not gold. I didn't uh, uh, digest these in nitric and separate them. So this is truly the precious metals, not the amount of gold. Um, I didn't have the ability to do it, but if you send it off to a professional assayer, they'll actually give you the amount of silver and gold in your sample. So uh, we're recovering about 75% of the precious metals in our sample based on our head ore and our tailings ore samples. So now let's take a look at uh, the percent recovery based on our gold. So this is looking at it in a different way. Here's the amount based on the total gold or precious metals that we recovered in number one and number two. So uh, out of this whole sample, we recovered uh, about 10 and a third grams of precious metals. And this is, judging by the color and the stuff, this is probably 90% gold. Um, but again, we're just using this. This is all of our gold and silver. The total weight of the sample was 1,655 pounds of ore. Converting it into kilograms, that's about 750 kilograms. So you take your uh, grams of precious metals, you div divide it by the amount of uh, tons you have, and you end up with uh, about 14 grams per metric ton. And if you take your amount of gold recovered divided by the total from our head ore sample, we end up with about 70% recovery. And this is a little bit lower because this is strictly the amount of metal that I recovered in the beads. There's probably some gold that I didn't recover. Either I lost it through panning or I lost it in the number three. Um, but this is definitely uh, a, an encouraging result based on our 77% recovery earlier. Most of the gold that we're recovering off the shaker table is free gold that we can recover in a button. And uh, so it's not like a bunch of it's locked up in sulfides or anything. That's where you get in, in uh, a hard spot when you're trying to gravity concentrate or and only 25% of the gold is free milling. This sample has um, about 90% of it based on this percent, 70% versus the 77. That's about 90% of it was recovered as free metallic uh, metal. So here's the number four shaker table tailings, and we've got them dried out in the sun. Now we're gonna take them and we're gonna screen them through a 50 mesh screen and a 100 mesh screen. So we'll get three fractions. We'll get 50 mesh plus, we'll get 50 to 100, and we'll get 100 minus. And then we're gonna take each one of those fractions and weigh them to figure out the percent um, uh, weight of each sample, and then we're going to assay them and see how much gold is in each fraction, and that way we can determine if uh, all of our gold is in the 50 mesh plus that we just need to grind finer, or if a lot of our gold is in the finer stuff, um, but it'll give us a lot more information about where to target for better recovery. This will be another good test actually to figure out the grind size from the hammer mill, and uh, like you may have saw in the video when I was taking uh, samples, I took them right out of the number four port on the shaker table. I didn't take them out of the spiral. Um, and so this has all the fractions that the hammer mill grinds to. It hasn't been classified or augered out or dewatered yet. And then here's a close up of that third, uh, 50 mesh plus. And so you can see it's fairly coarse. You can see the individual grain sizes. Um, it's kind of would be a, a beach sand. This is 50 to 100 mesh. And there again, you can still kind of see the individual grains. It would be a fine sand. 
And then this is the 100 mesh and smaller. And here you kind of lose the ability to see the individual grains. It's really powdery and cakey. Um, so that gives you kind of the idea of the size of the material we're talking about when we talk about mesh size and, and different sizes like that. So we'll take each uh, a section of each one of these and, uh, and get them assayed and we'll see uh, how much gold is in each one of these fractions. All right, so now let's go over the fractions from our tailings. Uh, we've uh, screened them out into our different fractions here. And this is the weight of the beads from each fraction. And going through a sample calculation here, we take the weight of our bead. This is the grams per 100 gram sample. Multiply it by the weight percentage of that screened fraction. And we multiply it by uh, the number of 100 grams we have in our sample bag. So this is uh, the same calculation we ran before. We got 0.7507 uh, tons, but that's how many 100 grams are in the bag. And that ends up getting you the amount of precious metals in that fraction of tailings. So in that fraction of tailings, we have 2.2 grams of precious metal left over if you screen them all to 50 mesh. Again, there's our three samples and our total grams in our sample, in our tailings is right around four. And that squares pretty good with the uh, one we did with the grams per ton, because if you take this and divide it by, or get it into grams per ton, it's about five. So it's a little bit more showing here when we, uh, screen them out into our different fractions. But looking at it as where the gold is in each fraction of our tailings, the 50 mesh plus has uh, about 55% of the precious metals. The 50 to 100 has about a third and the 100 minus has about 11% of the gold. That does not mean that if we ground everything to 100% or 100 minus that we'd get 90% uh, more gold. Let's scroll down the page here. Now we want to look at if we ground it all to 100 mesh minus, we would take the value of the assay that we got, the amount of gold in our sample, divide it by the weighted fraction of that sample, the weight percent, which is about a third or so. And uh, if we did all that, we'd end up with 1.5 grams of gold in our sample. Now, if we take our grams per gold in our sample and uh, we divide it by the sample size, that ends up with uh, two grams per metric ton in our tailings, which ends up being uh, 89, about 90% when you take the two grams per ton and divide it by our uh, head assay of 19.5 grams per ton, you get about 90% recovery. All right, now we wanna take a look at, is it worth grinding everything to 100 mesh minus to recover the additional gold? And so we did this calculation here where this is the amount of gold in our sample. This is the amount of gold that would be remaining in our sample if we ground everything to 100 mesh. And the difference there is about two and a half grams of gold in the sample. And this is the additional amount of gold we should be able to recover. If you uh, divide that by our sample size, this is how many grams of gold per metric ton we should have additional recovery. And so moving down the page here, we end up with uh, our grams per metric ton divided by the value of one gram of gold or multiplied by the value of one gram of gold. And it, we get about 200 more dollars per metric ton if we grind it all to 100 mesh. So here are a few uh, what if scenarios. If the additional cost to grind it to 100 mesh is $50 a ton, and that's for additional wear in the equipment or material handling or that sort of thing, we have an additional $150 more. Uh, this actually isn't revenue, this is profit. Uh, if our cost is $50,000 to grind to 100 mesh, you take your $50,000, divide it by $150 in profit, and it takes you about 333 tons to pay it off. Likewise, if it costs you $100,000 in additional equipment to grind to 100 mesh minus, here's a calculation for that. So um, these are these calculations are really important to do, and this is really important to get these samples going. Uh, so you can make these calculations and, and do them uh you know, have some good information to make your decisions on. And uh, there's a section now uh, I did on another video I posted about six months ago, but I think it's really, really important. There's a lot of good information in there. So I'm going to post it here now. Uh, and the numbers aren't going to be quite the same as what we've just gone through here, but it's another good example of uh, doing some sampling and trying to figure out how much gold you can recover and if it's a profitable venture 
um, at, at the current price and the current values you have in your ore. So we covered a lot of ground um, and we looked at all the details on our recovery and our grind size and all that stuff. Now I wanted to pull back and look at some of the bigger picture um, and do kind of a rough uh, back of the napkin analysis of what we could expect uh, if we implemented the system uh, up near the dump pile on this claim. So um, we're recovering about 75%. Uh, plus or minus, and with 20 grams a ton in the ore, that means we're recovering about 15 grams a ton. For an operation standpoint, you figure you can run uh, six hours a day, that's six tons, that's about 90 grams of gold. The operator uh, is gonna cost about $50 a ton. The system costs about $50 a ton to operate. You're gonna need an excavator or loader, let's put $50 a ton on that, and then an extra $50 a ton just for uh, you know, being conservative. So you're about $200 a ton to operate. And let's say we operate for eight hours a day. So those are our costs for eight hours a day. That ends up being right around $1,500. At 90 grams of gold recovered a day, that's about $4,500. So you're looking at about a $300 or a $3,000 spread there. And just for fun, let's double our cost. We'll say, okay, it's not gonna cost us $1,500. It's gonna cost us $3,000 a day to operate we're still coming out making about $1,500 a day. So I wanted to emphasize that uh, around the Western United States and the rest of the world, there could be lots of dump piles, tailings piles that have now become profitable due to the increase in price of gold. And so with the system behind me, you can see how easy it is to implement, put it on site and start producing gold, getting a lot of information that you need, getting a gold product, and uh, it's easy to take this system and expand it uh, into a larger system once you have the information that you need to do so. Also, one of the other things I wanted to point out here is you don't need to start with the full turnkey system. You can get a lot of information with just the hammer mill and shaker tail behind me, or even uh, a hammer mill that's powered by a gasoline motor and run down into a sluice, which we're working on, and I know a lot of you guys are really excited to see that. Um, so we'll have a video of that coming soon. But um, the turnkey system is really designed for uh, people who have uh, some knowledge of their claim, have done some analysis, and are ready to go for the next step into small scale production or bulk sampling. But again, for a lot of you small scale guys or you guys that uh, maybe don't have the budget or the, the tonnage to do uh, one ton an hour, start feeding by hand and start small. And if you uh, prove up the property, get some capital back from that initial investment, you already have the core components of the turnkey system, then you can just expand with a jaw crusher, some conveyors, a spiral classifier, and build as you go, um, and kind of bootstrap your way along in your, in your production and in your uh, gold mining efforts. One of the really important parts to understand as an operator or a bulk sampler of a gold claim is your goal is not to initially recover as much gold as you can. Your goal is to get the information you need to go for the next step for investing in machinery. And so uh, that's why we did our grind size analysis. With the hammer mill and the system as it is, we're recovering about 75% of the gold. But we found out that if you can grind to 100 mesh minus, you can recover somewhere in the 90% plus gold recovery. And so um, this material here out of the spiral classifier, this is still a resource. This has somewhere in the three to four grams per ton uh, of gold as it sits. And so you don't want to throw that away. We haven't lost any gold. The value is still there. And so as you uh, get your capital up or um, you're starting to produce a profit and get some money, you can take this pile and recover the gold out of it. Because there's, there's uh, about 100 to 150 dollars worth of recoverable gold a ton here and you don't want to throw that away and that's where a ball mill comes in you can purchase a ball mill you can leave the entire system the way it is and actually if if it were me and i was going to implement a ball mill into this system i'd take our spiral classifier i'd put a ball mill right here i'd divert the spiral classifier right into the ball mill i'd increase the table to a two ton per hour table and i'd run the ball mill directly onto the table with the head ore so anything that goes out of the spiral classifier into the tailings is true tailings. Anything that gets augered up goes through the ball mill and is reground and put right back directly onto the same production table that the head ore is running. And so all the values are gonna end up going over in the number one or number two. So that's one way that you can 
uh, increase your production or increase your recovery by adding a regrinding circuit to your production. And so the question we have to ask is, right now we're recovering 75%, we can recover 90% if we regrind this, but is it profitable to do so to get that extra 15%? And by introducing a ball mill, which has a very low cost of maintenance and wear, um, and if you have a, a large enough resource through the tailings, it probably makes sense to go after that $100 to $150 worth of recoverable gold a ton if you can keep the system moving and have the resource to justify it. The last thing I want to mention is that if you're in the gold mining industry, you know that there's lots and lots of properties out there and there's lots and lots of properties for sale. But whether you're working your claim yourself, looking to sell the claim in the future, or looking for further investment, if you have a gold property that's actually producing gold, whether that's run of mine stuff that you're mining or reworking the dump and tailings piles, having a product that you can make that's gold and then sell producing off your claim makes your property unique and way, way more valuable. And so having uh, the turnkey system producing a product makes you way more attractive to a uh, potential buyer or potential investors um, to really increase your production and get your uh, property up and producing on a larger scale. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments about our equipment or anything you saw on the video today, you can find our contact information in the description below. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.